Okay. Even I can. Uh, I need to explain uh, uh, some things. Uh, this uh, for all, uh, not only for the Udvash, uh, for everyone. Uh, he has taken uh, one one as the starting combination of AB. Now, in case in the NAND gate. In case in the NAND gate, um, uh, one input is one. In that case, the NAND output depends on NAND gate is A input. A input. Output. Um, uh, so the NAND output X will depend on Y gate. Similarly, for uh, the second NAND gate also. Um, as B is one, Y will depend on the last X value. Okay. So now let me go back to the waveform pattern. Here, um, uh, the initial values of x and y are never mentioned because they are the outputs. They are supposed to be some arbitrary arbitrary value or set on the power, power on uh, starter. So, the moment the system is power to on, which is the moment our output node will they will attain some. Voltage level, maybe zero, maybe one. I don't know which one voltage level it is going to attain. So that means initially the outputs of X and Y are supposed to be some unknown quantity. Now here, in case X and Y are initially unknown, so though A is one, as one, the other input of this second bandwidth is something some unknown quantity. So what will happen to its output? Can can it be some defined value? Logically, what does it, um, uh, seem to me, seem to, uh, seem to you? What should happen? No, sir. So the output should be some once again some uh, undetermined value. So that means in case x and y are assumed to be initially unknown. In that case, as a and b have been Taking to be one one at the very first instant. In that case, the output will continue to remain on something undefined. And how long that will continue? Now it will continue till A and B remains both one. So that's what is happening here. Uh, yes, uh, I have considered uh, my A B both uh, to be one up to this time instant, uh, up to sixty nanosecond. So till sixty nanosecond, X and Y. Has got to be some unknown output, some yes, unknown sir. level. Now after that, at 60th nanosecond, A and A, A has made a transition to logic zero state, and B has made a transition to logic one state. So A is zero, B is one. Initially unknown. Uh, um, uh, y is also initially unknown. So this Y is unknown here. This quantity. This is some unknown value, but A is zero. Uh, for one NAND gate, as soon as uh, one input becomes zero, I am not bothered about the other input values. So let them be unknown. There, let there be some defined value. Does not matter. The output of the NAND gate is defined. And what is that value? One. One. Let us see. Whatever. Uh, X has attained a logic one level. Okay. Now that logic one value of x will now come to this NAND input. So this is one. This is one. So y will be attaining logic zero level, and that's what is happening here. X is one. Y is zero. Okay, and this will continue. Now the problem will occur at some other point. See here, uh, as Udbhav has taken, I have also taken the same thing. A, B, both are zero zero. Uh, in case A, B, both are both are zero zero, what will happen to NAND latch output? That means uh, A, B, zero zero. Uh, what is this um, uh, input condition? Uh, is it allowed? No, sir. No, sir. Not allowed. But uh, he has taken it. I have also taken it to uh, see what happens. So A, B, zero zero. And after A B zero zero, uh, if 
uh, uh, I in the last class I have seen that after a b zero zero e phi simultaneously bring a b both to the logic one state, then some uh, undefined labels of output may be there. Undefined in the sense of uh, uh, the x may be one, y may be zero, x may be uh, zero, y may be one, or x y both oscillating. And when the oscillating condition comes. Propagation delay. Both the uh, NAND gates are having exactly same propagation delay. Now remember here, uh, 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 this uh, simulator, in this simulator, uh, we are not assigning any sort of gate delay. So all the gates are almost uh, having zero propagation delay. So that means that zero delay is also some sort of uh, equal uh, propagation delay. Now let me see what happens. Uh, by the way, uh, let me go back to this one. Uh, till um, no, which instant that AB were 0, 0? So it started uh, for 0 to 60 nanosecond, then uh, 80 nanosecond, that means 140, 140 plus 70, 140 plus 70 means 210, 210 uh, plus 90, uh, that means uh, 300. So till 300 nanosecond, uh, I have this set of values. And from uh, uh, no, 210 to 300, I am having AB both zero. And at the 300 nanosecond, uh, from 300 to uh, 400 nanosecond, I have made uh, AB both one. Now let me see what happens. See, simulation process has stopped at 300 nanosecond. It has not uh, proceeded any further. Though my uh, <laughs> Duration for one uh, run of simulation is one microsecond. It has not uh, proceeded any further above above the 300 nanosecond. Why? See here. Come to this. Error. At 300 nanosecond, out of uh, one uh, uh, microsecond, iteration limit is reached. Possible zero delay oscillation detected when simulation, where simulation cannot advance in time because signals cannot resolve to a stable value in something such file. Please correct the code in order to advance past the current simulation time. That means, he will say, beyond this 300 nanosecond, it cannot proceed for the simulation because uh, at a sense coach, at a zero delay oscillation, oscillatory nature has and output x and y key value may be to resolve kuti but this correct this code code means uh, this uh, test into a form code uh, or the uh, actual your um, um, circuit design code uh, you have to correct this code in order to advance past current simulation time current simulation time is 300 nanosecond air project from proceed you have to correct the codes that means that after 0, 0, you cannot simultaneously bring 1, 1 at the input state. But here, if I After 0, 0, if I uh, go back to uh, um, uh, 1, 0 and uh, input uh, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, then I, if I go for A, B, both 1, let us see what happens. Let me save this file and then go for the status simulation. See, there is no such problem, no, no problem at all. Uh, here, A, B both were uh, zero. So, X, Y both are one. Now, at this time and instead, I have made A, one, B zero. So, as B is zero, that will force uh, uh, your Y to be uh, one. And as Y is one, and a is 1, my x will become 0. So that is one defined value. Uh, then uh, I have made a b 1 1 here. So in case a b is 1 1, what is happening? The last output uh, condition is continuing. 
So as part of the, um, uh, the two table. And uh, most are clear that uh, some zero below oscillation and then all, nothing is coming. Okay. You got this. The problem will arise only when you bring A, B both to one, one state simultaneously from the zero, zero condition. From other two states, the zero one or one zero state. If you are, if I go to logic one one uh, input combination, in that case there will not be any error, any problem at all, no ambiguity at all. So that's why what we have uh, um, uh, made, we have to make sure that the zero zero input combination is not present at the basic NAND latch output. And for not latch, that will be the one one input combination will be prohibited. Okay. Uh, Sir, uh, from zero zero when we are going to one one, uh, that ambiguity problem as shape uh, can proper Yes, sir. Do you see the attendance? No, I Okay, I'll stop it here. Uh, here I've got drawn uh, two block diagrams for the uh, feedback topologies. Uh, in one, uh, they, 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 uh, we have used one subtractor, in the other one, we have used added. So here, basically, I have gone for. Say, connect a doubt. Ah, uh, yeah, we have discussed for any time. Ah, here we have gone for T minus B. Oh, whereas here I have gone for adder operation. That means my VE will be VI plus V. Now both are feedback. And we are also, for the timing, we are assuming that A and uh, uh, beta both are constant amplifier gains. They, they are basically amplifier gains and they are constant value. They are not you know, introducing any phase shift. For the time being, we are assuming that. It may so happen that uh, the amplifier A might be having some uh, gain as well as some phase. Beta is also um, uh, going to have a certain gain as well as some phase. But for the time being, we're assuming that the phase introduced uh, uh, by a, both A as well as beta are zero. So, uh, let us uh, consider there is some increasing VI distance. If VI increases, what happened to v, what will happen to VE? It will increase. It will increase. If VE increases, what will happen to V naught? It will increase. If V naught increases, what will happen to VF? It will also increase. Now, due to the increase in VF, what will happen to VE? It will again increase. No. Do you move? For negative sub subtract trade, it will decrease. It will decrease. Okay, so uh, in this type of uh, football, uh, feedback or topology, what is happening is uh, any increasing disturbance at the input side uh, is initially propagating to the output, but uh, that uh, the way that part of a part of the output is being fed back to the input side 
is uh, uh, that nature feedback nature is trying to reduce the effect of the input disturbance bi was increasing that was leading to one increasing uh, increasing effect in b but that increasing effect in b uh, when it is uh, coming uh, um, back to b through bf it is uh, as if uh, having certain, uh, some uh, stabilizing effect that means b as bf is increasing my be will try to decrease so it will try somehow it is uh, trying to balance the effect of the increasing disturbance increasing input disturbance the feedback nature is trying to neutralize or balance the effect of the in increasing input disturbance same is true for the decrease in vi input disturbance if vi is decreased what happens to be it will decrease decrease so that will lead to a decreasing level in vi not that will lead to one decreasing level in vf so that will lead to one increasing effect in vi so basically there also what i find is though the input was having one decreasing disturbance the way that uh, input uh, the, the, the way the output is be a part of the output is being fed back to the input side that decreasing input disturbance is basically trying to get neutralized or balanced so certain balancing action will be there in this type of feedback topology now if i go for the next one here so vi into ha bol sir vf increase korlo to ve decrease korlo kintu sir tar pore ve decrease korlo bole vf o decrease korbe to sir ve tar pore increase hoye jabe the the amount the amount by which the vf was in, uh, increasing basically here we should, we should mention it should be del vi is increasing now. but it is very small no not very small uh, uh, normally it is small, small small disturbance but it is not very small i won't say that. what i am saying is the change in vi that is increasing acha 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 so what you will find that when it is a, a propagated flowing through this, uh, through this uh, loop what will happen is that gradually the del v not uh, will be uh, approaching zero value as this loop propagates the del v not value Who will approach a zero value? So that means some there will be some v not there level at which the output will get stabilized. Now uh, let us come to the uh, second part, second topology. If there is any increase in disturbance in VR, so what will happen to V? Increase. What level to V not? Increase. What level to VF? Increase. What level to VE? Again increase. That means the way the feedback has been implemented, any increasing disturb input disturbance will go on increase unbounded manner. The output will go on increasing the way the feedback has been implemented. Vf increase ko le, V increase ko le, then V not will also increase. Then that will lead to the increasing um, level in Vf. That will further increase V. That will further increase V not. So this uh, loop will continue. Ultimately, what will happen to V not? Infinite. Saturation uh, level. Yeah. Saturation. That will lead to the uh, uh, reach the saturation voltage level. If it is an uh, increasing uh, input disturbance, then V not will uh, reach plus V set level. Yeah, uh, if uh, uh, there is uh, one decreasing of the disturbance in VI, it will reach minus V set level. So, uh, but ideally, uh, it should reach the either plus or minus V set level. But uh, practically, that cannot happen because uh, the amplifiers are limited by the saturation. Uh, amplifier outputs are limited by the saturation voltage level uh, uh, supplied to the amplifiers. Okay, so. this type of feedback topology where instead of subtractor we have implemented one adder is called a positive feedback
and this is called negative feedback. In the case of negative feedback, any increasing disturbance um, uh, when it uh, goes through the feedback loop, uh, uh, the feedback nature is such that it is trying to stabilize the effect of the input disturbance at the output. But in the case of positive feedback, the feedback uh, is implemented in such a manner that any increasing disturbance will um, uh, uh, go on increasing in an unbounded manner at the output. And in case of any dis decreasing disturbance, also this will go on in an unbounded manner and its effect will fail in the output. Ideally, the output level should reach plus or minus this at uh, plus or minus in infinite levels, but practically that cannot happen. So the output will reach the saturation voltage, either of the saturation voltage level in the case of positive feedback. So um, if anybody asks you to, uh, to uh, distinguish between the positive feedback and negative feedback, you should uh, mention this. In terms of the effect, that is effect of input disturbance felt at the output when the feedback loop is implemented. So in case of negative feedback, the effect of input disturbance will get stabilized and uh, we, you are expected to achieve one stabilized output level. But in the case of positive feedback, the uh, input disturbance will move uh, when it moves through the loop the it will go uh, on in an unbounded manner and the output will ideally reach the plus or minus this level. okay now uh, 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 in this uh, negative feedback topology when i start from this and i reach here how much phase shift i have uh, uh, encountered zero zero from here to here how much? Zero. Zero. Because it's nothing but one wire. Now from here to here. Zero. Zero. So now from uh, this VE to this VA, how much is the phase shift? 180. VE no? to VA. VE to V0. Zero. 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 VE to VA, V0 zero. V0 to VF zero. So VE to VF is also zero. Is it not? Now from VF yes. to V, what is the difference? Uh, phase shift. One eight. One eight. One eight. Because this minus sign is there. So when I um, uh, move through this loop, in, in this complete loop, the net phase shift encounter is? 180. 180. So in, what you will find that in the case of negative feedback uh, implementations, uh, that total phase shift encountered in the loop will be odd multiples of 1 hd that will be odd multiples of 1 hd either uh, 1 hd or uh, 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 next one should be your um, 360 then 540 isn't it Yes, sir. Yeah. So the, the total phase shift encountered in the loop, if that happens to be odd multiples of pi, that will be essentially one negative feedback topology that has been implemented there. Whereas if I go for the positive feedback uh, network, what is the total phase shift encountered in the loop? Zero dB. Because here instead of subtractor, I have used one adder. So we have to be, I have once again, uh, I am also once again encountering zero phase shift. So net total phase shift encounter in the loop is zero degree here. So in the case of positive feedback uh, amplifier, uh, you, what you will find that the total phase shift encounter in the loop will be either zero or integral multiples of two pi. So either zero or two pi n. For AN is 1, 2, 3, 4, any. Ah, you have follow Kalkati. Sir, negative feedback is integral multiples. Odd multiples of pi. Odd multiples of pi. So, should I think about the way 2n plus 1? Pi will the bar. Should I order the Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, this is what multiples of pi. That should be a total phase shift encounter. Okay, fine. 
এবার আমি আবার এখানে আসি এবার যে কারণে আমার এত ফিডব্যাকের গল্প বলা জয়দীপের কি হলো মানে শরীর খারাপ হয়েছে তার জন্য so ইনপুট <laughs> or uh, um, uh, if you can find out what is the total case shift uh, encounter in the loop i am ever kada jano bolechile ha parbe yes so why you saying this for the kid so phase shift angle theke bolte parbo or shuddho shuddho are so i can bolte parbo it is coming here and then finally it is coming to the same input side so this is the feedback path for a the signal which is starting at a that is the feedback path for the signal that is starting at b this is the path that is the feedback um, uh, loop um, um, which is uh, relevant for the signal which is starting at b now let me find out the total phase shift encountered in the loop sir ek bar path ko log ek bar bolte parun sir i am starting from a so a theke c a er effect ta kothay porche prothome q q so this is the path then uh, uh, the q is going where b er input then uh, uh, this uh, input is affecting uh, uh, which node q bar q bar then q bar is going to uh, where a input acha so this is the bar okay so let us find out try to find out that net phase shift encountered in this path from a to q what is the phase shift 180 degree 180 degree 
because uh, uh, you are um, there is one uh, uh, NAND gate in between A and Q. So the NAND gate is supposed to introduce one at the face. Then uh, Q to this input. What is the phase shift? Q to Zero. this input. Zero degree. So A to this input. What is phase shift? 180. Now from uh, this input to Q bar. What is the phase shift? 180. 180. So A to Q bar. What is the net phase shift? 360. 360. From Q bar to this input. What is the phase shift? Zero degree. Zero. So A to this input. 360. 360. So the net total phase shift encountered in the loop is integral multiple of 2 pi. 360 degree. So that implies that this is nothing but one positive feedback loop. So in the case of this latch, this NAND latch, we have implemented one positive feedback. Now these output levels, what are the possible output levels, voltage levels? What are the possible voltage levels at Q1, Q1? For positive saturation voltage and negative saturation voltage. Uh, okay, you can say that, but uh, um, the better answer will be the voltage equivalent of logic 1 and voltage equivalent, isn't it? Yes. The voltage equivalent of yes. logic 1 uh, and voltage equivalent of logic 0. But what are they? They are basically, basically these NAND gates are acting like some sort of amplifier. And this amplifier, uh, when it operates in either of these two levels only, that means they are nothing but your saturation voltage level. And uh, when it is transiting, then only it is switching from one saturation voltage level to other saturation voltage level. So only when it is switching its state, then only this amplifier or this internal circuit is bearing some sort of amplifier. Otherwise, uh, it is always operating in the saturation uh, nonlinear region or the saturation voltage is the uh, level that is available at the output. So, and we have also seen that in the case of positive feedback amplifier, what normally happens to the output? output. Does it remain in the linear region? No. The output never remains in the linear region if, 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 if you have implemented on positive feedback circuit. Because uh, always there will be some, uh, some of the other input disturbance and that will lead to one either plus visible output or then minus visible output. So there in the positive feedback network, you will never achieve linear operation. You are only having nonlinear operation and that to the output voltage level will be either plus or minus visible. But in case you go for the negative feedback, there primarily you will be having a linear operation. That means output will be within the plus and minus V set levels. It will uh, uh, rarely reach the plus saturation voltage level and minus saturation voltage level. But in the positive feedback it is just the reverse thing. Uh, it will rarely remain in the linear region. And uh, most of the time, or almost every day, you will find the output to be in either plus reset or minus reset. Only when it, uh, the output is switching, there you will find the linear region momentarily at the amplifier output. Okay? Sir, can you What you are finding that Q and Q are, they are always the saturation voltage levels. So, from that analogy of uh, the voltage levels of positive feedback network, uh, we can also predict that uh, this uh, particular circuit uh, where two NAND gates are um, uh, used in this particular mode, uh, they are basically, I have implemented one positive feedback loop. Ah, well, okay, keep watching. Sir, what is the output of the output of linear region? What is it? Sir, positive feedback is... Uh, uh, that? Uh, that is only the, the transient uh, portion of the uh, transient operation. When the output is uh, switching from plus to minus visible or minus to plus, visible, then only uh, you uh, um, have uh, that uh, some linear output voltage you will get. Okay, 
fact. So, uh, in, in, in fact, uh, whenever you uh, try to implement any latch, be it NAND latch, be it NOR latch, every latch will essentially involve one positive feedback network. So, latch money, you have already used the uh, positive feedback circuit. One positive feedback loop you have implemented there. So, without positive feedback loop, no memory device will function. So, positive feedback is a must in the case of all sorts of latches and as the NAND latch and NOR latch are the basic building block or the heart of any memory device. So, um, in those places also you find positive feedback implemented. So, a question of NAND latch and NOR latch, what type of feedback has been implemented here and explain it. Uh, normally, uh, definitely IT sector company they will use code, right? Code they will develop in electronics company. Uh, Fine. I have a switch. Uh, if I press the switch, the five volt uh, uh, will get connected to this node. And if the switch is uh, remains open, uh, the five volt is not getting to this particular node. Now, when the switch is open, what will be the logic level available at A? Zero. Zero. So let uh, at this time instant, the switch is closed. So what will happen uh, at that point of time? At this point of time, the switch has been closed. Logic. So what will happen now? Logic value will be 1. So it will go to logic 1. And uh, what will, uh, if the switch remains uh, in, in that position, what will uh, happen to it? That will remain in logic one value, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, so this is the ideal scenario. Practically, all switches are basically mechanical switches, and you know all mechanical switches has got certain spring action involved there. What is the spring action? <coughs> uh, Due to the spring action, as soon as you press the switch, the contact will be made. But due to the spring action, the contact will be broken momentarily for some time, for some duration. Due to the spring action. And the, uh, uh, due to the spring action, the contact will be made once again. Contact will be broken once again, made, uh, uh, broken, made, broken, and ultimately that will be in the made condition. So when uh, the switch uh, may be due to the uh, mechanical uh, the spring action is broken, that means the contact is broken, uh, what, what will happen to the A? A will be zero. So I, I will not get this type of ideal scenario. Instead, what I will be getting is momentarily one, then as um, uh, the Due to the spring action and the contact is broken, we go to the zero level, uh, then the contact will be made once again. 
will broken spring action due to spring action may broken ultimately be kono ek shomoy the contact will remain in the mate condition okay so this type of false trans that means here i what i find is there are several false transitions available at the node a i this will be my ideal requirement but instead what i am getting is this one is so the ideal requirement i am getting this type of waveform at the output this is called bouncing effect of the switch no can it create any problem can this bouncing effect create any problem yes sir why under which situation it can create problem sir so yes. land land lesser problem with the us uh abhi the land lesser ko sunga lagai na it basically um uh, say i have one task schedule i have one task scheduler what happens is here my a is coming i this task scheduler can initiate four tasks task number 1 is required to be initiated at the second press of the switch task 2 needs to be initiated at initiated at the fifth press of the switch sw then i say 7 then say 12 abhi chale actually now at every press ideally i require only one this type of rising edge how do how will you find out how many times the switch has been pressed how are you going to find out how many times the switch has been pressed the number of vertical lines number of vertical lines that is number of rising edges in a will indicate the number of times the switch has been pressed that is ideal scenario in absence of any bouncing effect so in absence of bounce in any bouncing effect any time i press the switch the a changes from 0 to 1 and any time i deactivate the switch the value of a changes from 1 to 0 so if i press the switch twice i will be getting this type of wave formatting so what what i do is i simply count the rising edge is that are available in a if the count of the rising edge is 2 i will start the first job if that count is 5 i will start the second job if it is 7 i will start the third job if this 12 i will start the fourth job so that's the logic for the task schedule but what problem we will be facing here is instead of this i am what i am getting is this setting 
so it may so happen and the, uh, remember here the number of times that the switch bounces nobody knows nobody can predict how many uh, uh, times the switch is going to bounce so what means uh, happen that at the very first press it so what happen it will it will Though uh, supposed to be initiated at the twelfth place of the switch, but at the first place of the switch, I am getting twelve such rising edges in E due to the bouncing it. So the that particular job number four will be falsely activated. So this type of problem uh, will may create havoc in digital circuitry. Because from uh, the external world, uh, the, the switch to the switches, we give certain inputs, and if there are some bouncing effects, in that case, uh, I require some serious signal processing to eliminate the that bouncing effect from of the switch. The switch, whenever it bounces, it may create a lot of problem in the digital side. So we have to be very careful about the debouncing of the switches. So all the switches must, all the mechanical switches must be debounced before its uh, response uh, is uh, taken as one input for the logic circuits. Sir, sir, hmm. well, sir uh, digital domain is a physical switch. Who the guy is? Ah, you mean you can make a keyboard to use code. Switch is thakena thakena hai? Acha acha, thik hai. So, you have an instrumentation field le jaale. They will have onek kiyo mein input is switch it through the other switch. Switch is a part and parcel of the line. Sir, kinda diode kiyo the switch is a use kore jaale. देखे क Uh, this is my basic NAND latch. The portion enclosed uh, with, with uh, yellow border. Uh, that is the basic NAND latch, isn't it? Yes, sir. So it has got uh, two inputs A and B, and the outputs are Q and Q bar. And we are um, assuming that we will try to prohibit zero zero input combination. At A and B. Now here, this particular switch, this got a special name. This is called S P D T E switch. Now, what is the full form of S P D T? The single pole double throat. This is the pole. 
These are the two throats. हमारे जगह आता था वही एट्टी फाइव से नाइन्टी के बीच में सिद्ध सत्तर लुक है जो मैं लेके आ रहा हूँ नो से उससे भी कम है इनिशियली द स्विच वाज इन पोजीशन नंबर 1 देख नीचे पे इनके स्विच इज इन पोजीशन नंबर 1 स्विच कांटेक्ट इज इन पोजीशन नंबर 1 व्हाट हैपेंस टू ए 0 बी ब्लॉक मां बात व्हाट हैपेंस टू बी 180 तो ए इज 0 बी इज 1 सो व्हाट हैपेंस टू क्यू एंड क्यू 1 बाकी सब पे 85 है 1 and 0 फाइन आह लेट अस कंसीडर दिस इज दिस टू बी माय याद नहीं इतना याद होगा तो मैं बिल्कुल बोल रहा हूँ स्विच आउटपुट सो दैट मींस माय आउटपुट इज लॉजिक जी इसमें आउटपुट इज लॉजिक जी now at a particular time instant the contact at the, the uh, there has been the one requirement that the switch should move to contact number 2 prior to this time instant in digital lab ka sala prior to this time instant the switch was in contact number 1 So as a result, the output you have got is zero. This is the output. Instrumentation or now at this time instead there uh, has been one requirement Transfer that the switch the should the now the move to position number two from position number one. Now before reaching position number two, what will happen to uh, the contact between the switch and number one? Mathematics, I have OD or PD. I have. 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 One because the contact is yet to reach position yeah, number two. Mathematics three or D. So in the for the NAND lab, if one one is the input combination, what happens to the output? Last test me, ये तो नहीं आएगा लोग. So the previous one. Previous. So what is the previous one? So one and zero. One zero. Zero. Ma, I am talking about this output. Only. Zero. Zero. So this will remain zero. I am not talking about Q. I am now interested only Q bar. Because that Q bar I have uh, taken as output. Sure. Fine. Now, as soon as the and uh, uh, how long this uh, uh, continues till uh, con, uh, switch contact reaches position two. As soon as the switch reaches position two, what is to be? Zero. 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 What happens to A? One. 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 So as B is uh, now oh, zero. What happens to Q bar? One. 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 Okay. Q is now one. This one will be found here. Is it not? Yes, sir. The Q bar is one. That uh, effect will definitely be sensed here. Hmm. At this uh, upper NAND input. So A is one and the other input is also one. So what happens to B? Uh, what happens to Q? Zero. Zero. That zero will definitely come and sit here. Zero zero. What happens to my output Q bar? One one one. Now this uh, SPDT switch is also one mechanical switch. Hmm. So the uh, uh, due to the spring action, the contact uh, though the contact was made just uh, um, at this point of time, but uh, due to the spring action, the contact will be momentarily broken. So contact broken means the switch contact now moves away from switch number two. But the spring action will not be of that much magnitude, so that that due to the spring action only, the switch will uh, uh, move to position number one. That will not happen. 
If the spring action, the contact with position number two will be made and broken, made and broken, made and broken, and ultimately made. But when the contact uh, from, from position number two is broken, the spring action is definitely not going to be of that much magnitude uh, so that uh, my contact will reach uh, the position number two, one due to the spring action itself. And then unless uh, the user makes that arrangement, the contact uh, will not reach uh, position number one of its own due to the spring action. If the user brings it to question number one, it will uh, come in. But once again, when it, it, uh, first time it uh, makes one contact with question number one, once again, there will be one thing action involved there. No, I am not interested in that. Uh, uh, when the contact uh, comes to position number two, uh, the output Q1 becomes one, and what I find that Q becomes zero, and that zero comes here and sits here. Now, due to the spring action, contact uh, will be broken from position number two. So, what will happen to B? One. One. What happens to A? One. One. Uh, but uh, though B is one, uh, what happens to the other input of this NAND gate? Though B is B has become one due to the spring action, what happens to the other input of this particular NAND gate? For B yeah. is one. So, as it is zero, will this uh, uh, chain of state in B really matter at output Q1? No, sir. So, the output Q1 will continue to remain one, and uh, as output Q1 continues to remain one, uh, the Q will also continue to remain zero. Is it not? Yes. Fine. Now the contact with the position number two will be made once again. When it is made, B becomes zero again. But uh, that will not change any um, change the status of Q bar. So Q will also not change. Contact will be broken from uh, um, position number two. There also uh, B will become one, so uh, uh, but uh, that will not have any effect on Q1 because the other input of that particular NAND gate is zero. So though there is a definitely uh, some bounce effects involved in this spring action in uh, in this uh, switch spring action, but that will have absolutely no effect here. At Q word, definitely it is not going to have any effect. So output will remain one forever. Forever, uh, it should be forever statement is wrong. Uh, it will remain one so long the contact does not return to question number one. Okay. Now when it reaches to uh, uh, question number one again, when the contact uh, from two is broken and the switch moves to Position number one. So what happens when the switch is in between? A, B are both one. So last state continues. So output remains one. When the switch first time reaches position number one, what happens to Q one? Uh, sorry, um, what happens to Q? When the switch first reaches position number one, what happens to A? Zero. Zero. As A is zero, Q cannot remain zero. What wow. is Q will become one. That one will come here. Now B is one because there is no contact in position number two. So B is one. The other input is one. So Q bar happens to be zero. 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 So output moves to zero state. So that zero comes here. Now, once uh, this input becomes zero, uh, let there be an um, uh, infinite number of bouncings uh, uh, in uh, this position number one, this is the mechanical switch effect or the spring effect. Let there be infinite number of zero to one, one to zero transitions at A. As this input is zero, that will not propagate here. And as that is not getting propagated here, there is no chance it will propagate here. So there is no chance it will propagate to the output. 
So the output will have this smooth curve like this. So the bouncing effect, uh, though it is uh, uh, very much present in the uh, due to the spin action of uh, the um, SPG switches, but at the output is totally eliminated. The bouncing effect is totally eliminated. So this is the debouncer setting. Remember, this debouncer side, this specific debouncer side will work with function only where you are using SPDT type of switches, single pole double through type of switches. For those type of switches only, this debouncer circuit will function, will operate. In fact, you uh, have control engineering lab for the action. You have control next semester. Next semester. Next semester. So uh, the lab may be in the next semester or the uh, next, next semester uh, already. Uh, this, there you will find that KDB sir or Professor Kumar Debaraji sir, but he will be taking the continuing lab most probably. Uh, there are several circuits where these land latches are extensively used for debouncing. So in the control system also we have to um, give several switch inputs. So before accepting those switch in inputs in the digital circuit we have to pass them via some debouncer so there sir has used this type of basic NAND latch as one switch debouncer so this is one uh, um, utility one practical utility of NAND latch and that utility is in the field in the where there is a requirement of debouncing some mechanical switch but remember that the mechanical switch should be of the type of spdt type of switch single pole double throw type if it is double pole or double throw it will not function if it is single pole single throw it will also not function sir sorry switch and pole is a five for tower key money sorry switch and pole is a five watt tower key money sir I what now? ASW would sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, very sorry. I'm not going to get a good Switch. So, ASW stands for the switch. Uh, so far, we have discussed about um, uh, the two fundamental latches. One is the NAND latch and the other is the NOR latch. And um, as uh, I have mentioned earlier also, we'll be extensively using uh, the NAND latch uh, modules. NOR latch, uh, NOR latch modules can also be used in a similar manner. But I am not going for that details. Now this NAND latch, uh, the, is there any clock signal involved? No, sir. There is no clock signal. There is no timing uh, signal involved there. But if you uh, go back to that uh, um, uh, sequential logic block diagram, you'll find you, um, probably you will remember that there are two combination logic blocks: output combination logic block, next state combination logic block, and there is one memory unit, memory block, uh, which is storing uh, the uh, uh, binary encoded history information. That is the present state of the circuit. Now there. Uh, probably you will uh, you remember uh, that there is something called one clock signal involved and the clock signal was supposed to be one uh, periodic square of type of uh, pattern uh, the duty ratio may be 50 percent maybe uh, less than 50 percent or more than 50 percent it may be of any duty ratio so that clock signal the why is that required yes why yes why the clock signals are required? Sir, the next state are present state a differentiate cook this up. No, no. Um, uh, when you are dealing with the sequential logic circuits, uh, you are dealing with different time instants. So when you talk about the past history of the circuit, that means you are uh, uh, referring to some time, timing. When you are saying that you are in the present state, that means you are also referring to some time instant. 
you are referring to some next day that means you are referring to some time instant so to uh, identify what time instant that the circuit is there is present is available in the circuit uh, we need to introduce some clock signal there because in real world also we use the clock or the watch uh, to uh, indicate the time so same is true in the case of sequential light circuit there also i should introduce certain timing signal and if you remember i don't know See, this was the clock signal. So, what is happening at any time instant, uh, the next state information is generated by the next state commission logic and that is residing at the memory input. It will not uh, propagate to the memory output. It will wait for the next time tick. When the next time tick comes, uh, this input gets translated as the present state and uh, that is nothing but the output of the memory block. So, till when you are at this particular time instant, certain next state information has been created and that resides, that comes and stays at the memory input. How long? Over this period. Over this period. When the next time tick comes, then only that particular input combination will get translated as the memory output. And that will reflect the new present state at, available at the next time tick. And this is the next time thing. Okay, so it is the memory unit. The memory unit should be designed in such a manner that uh, its in, uh, even if its inputs primary inputs changes, that to, that changes in the primary input will not affect the output. At that same very instant, to wait for uh, the next time tick for the input to be reflected to the output. IDP. The memory input should be designed in such a manner that even if its inputs are getting modified, that modified inputs will not have any effect on the memory output instantaneously. The memory device will wait for the arrival of the next time tick and when the next time tick comes, then only the whatever changes have occurred in the input that will get reflected at the memory output. So this should be the way the memory uh, has got to be designed. But uh, is your basic knowledge or basic knowledge uh, no following uh, is uh, 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 serving this purpose? No. Why? Why no? Because there is no clock signal and uh, uh, as soon as the input gets modified, the output also will get modified. Yes. So there is a, nothing like clock signal there. So whenever there is any input change, that will instantaneously get reflected to the output. Uh, that uh, I should not say instantaneously, there will be certain propagation delay. Um, yeah, let us uh, set aside the propagation delay part. Uh, so what I'll say that uh, as soon as there is some input uh, change, that will get reflected to the output, if I ignore the propagation delay. But uh, that is not the way uh, the memory device should operate. It should wait for the timing signal it should wait for the next time tick when will uh, uh, and that arrival of the next time tick will indicate to the memory device that okay now is the time that uh, whatever input uh, is available at uh, your input side that should have some um, changing effect that may have something effect output and let it be there so i have to now introduce that some facility where i can introduce the clock signal along with the basic latch.
Uh, when prop is zero, what happens to AB? One one. One one. 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 If AB is one one for the uh, basic NAND let or the fundamental NAND let, what happens to QT1? Not allowed. Who says it is not allowed? Q minus, sir. It is the previous um, output value. That is Q minus. And Q yes, sir. Uh, in the basic analysis, the zero, remember the zero zero input combination is prohibited. Basic non latch one one input combination is prohibited. So, in, whenever A and B are both one, uh, is basically maintaining the last state. Yes. That means Q will be the previous value, Q1 will also be the previous value. Q is the Q minus, uh, Q1 is also Q bar minus. Fine. So that means uh, uh, I need not bother about the output for the duration when clock is zero. I should be bothered about the output or the primary inputs. The effects of the primary inputs to the output when clock is high. When the clock is logic one, during that period, whatever primary inputs are there, they may have some effect on A B, and as they may be affecting A B, so A B B A B will also in turn may affect Q Q one. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now. When clock is 1, what is the relationship between this primary input and A? A bar. So this is basically A bar. Similarly, this will be nothing but B bar. Is it not? Yes, sir. So, my primary inputs for this particular circuit are A bar and B bar. Uh, by, by the way, for my basic NAND latch, which input combination is prohibited? Zero, zero. zero, zero. So, uh, 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 if AB00 zero, zero is prohibited, in that case, what values of A bar B bar will be prohibited? One, one. one, one. one, one. This is not allowed. Now let me uh, go for uh, um, uh, the other input, other three input combination. A bar, B bar, both are zero. So what happens to A B? One one. One one. And if A B is one one, what happens to Q Q bar? Previous output Q minus. That is well. Now, what is mean by Qn and Qn plus 1? So if this is the nth clock, nth clock period, in that case, the value of Q within this period of time is termed as Qn. This will be Qn plus 1. Okay, so this is the present state, Qn is the present state, and Qn plus 1 will be the next stage. Okay. 
Uh, when a is zero, b is one. What happens to p one plus one? Zero. A is zero. That means sorry, sorry. A, when a bar is zero, b bar is one. A bar is zero means a is a is one. 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 That means b is zero. As b is zero, what happens to q one? One. One. If b uh, q bar is one, what happens to q? Zero. zero. So the output will be zero. At any point of time, if you are facing any problem, please let me know. Fine. Next is one zero. One. So this will be one. This will be zero. So I'll start with this NAND gate. So A is zero. So Q will be one. Q one means one one. This will be zero. Okay. Now here, what I find is, uh, in case uh, a is zero, b is one, the memory outcome is zero. In case a is one, b is zero, memory outcome is one. In case a is zero, b is also zero. Memory outcome is the previous memory output value. And another concept we will introduce uh, that uh, one memory element is said to be set is said to be set if its output is one. Setting means the output bringing the output to logic one state. Resetting one. Memory device means I am forcing the output of the memory to zero. So setting means uh, we are going to logic one state. Resetting means we are going to logic zero state. Now when the input combination is zero one, uh, is the memory set or reset? Reset. The memory is reset. When the input combination is one zero, the memory is set because the Q n plus one has become one. So the memory is going to be set if I introduce one zero at the input combination. Here, out of this uh, a bar and b bar two inputs, it is the b bar where that input is set, the output is reset. So when b bar becomes one, output is reset. Whereas when a becomes one. The output is set. So now onwards, we will not term the primary inputs to be A bar or B bar inputs. We will instead term them as set input and reset input. Or in short, S and R input. Because when S is 1 and R is 0, the memory is getting set Q, because Q is Q plus 1 will become 1. In case S is 0, R is 1, the memory is going to be reset because by Q plus 1, you will find that there it is becoming 0. So, from that concept, this memory element is called one block is a one block is a let one of the RS let you think about it and as these are now getting termed as S and R inputs so now onwards, I will not talk about AB input of the basic NAND line. Instead, this will be termed as So, you are given one basic NAND line. That means you are given this, this one.
you are given this one. How can you have been supplied with one S bar or bar latch? Is there any difference between this module and the S bar or bar latch? No, sir. Because these names have been changed from AB to S bar or bar. So if I say, if I talk about S bar or bar latch, then basically we are talking about this basic NAN latch. And that S bar or bar latch or the basic NAN latch can be made clocked to realize one clock SR latch. And this is the structure of the clock SR latch. Uh, but uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, is it still uh, serving your purpose? What was your purpose? Your purpose was uh, to ensure that at only a specific time instant, the input of the memory will affect the output, will get reflected to the output. Is it, are you achieving that here? Sir, I have a question to repeat what was In that sequential logic circuit uh, uh, block diagram, when we uh, discussed about those things, we say that uh, the uh, uh, the next state convolution logic is uh, preparing the next state information that is residing at the memory input, and only when the next time tick comes at that very instant, uh, the effect of the um, uh, whatever inputs are there that will affect the output of the memory, or the input will get reflected to the memory output. And when that uh, does it happen uh, at a specific time instant of um, when uh, what I term as the arrival of the next time tick. Are you getting uh, that uh, type of memory here? Will the inputs affect the output only at a specific time instant? Is it happening like that? What are the inputs? What are the inputs? Yes, sir. Yes, and R of the input. Clock is uh, the clock signal, that is a different concept. Uh, this S and R, in, if there is any change at any point of time in S and R, uh, what happens um, uh, to that uh, um, uh, change in S and R and how, at which I understand that S and R change is will get reflected in the Q, Q1? At which time instead that any change in S and R will get shifted to the Q Q1? When clock signal is one. When clock signal is one. Is it any specific time instant? No, sir. No. It is quite a long period. This is this period. So over this period, if, uh, Whenever there is any change in S and R, that will get referred to the Q one. So here, that specific time instant is not involved in this particular uh, uh, type of memory block. Here, I cannot say that only at the rising age of the clock, uh, the um, uh, output will get affected by the input, or only at the falling age of the clock, the output will get affected by the input. That I cannot ensure. What I have ensured that uh, by this particular configuration, uh, when the clock is zero, uh, the in in input changes will not affect the output. But whenever the clock is one, uh, by if there is any change in the input combination, that will affect the output. So this uh, uh, is uh, uh, there is some advancement uh, into my required type of memory block, but this is also not the required type of memory where I can ensure the changes in output due to the changes in input specific to a particular time instant. Whereas the connect uh, um, uh, throughout the level, when the clock is one, output is becoming affected, uh, output, output is getting affected by the input change. So whenever uh, uh, I am having active level of the clock and active, the active level of the clock is logic one level, 
So whenever I am having the active level, level of the clock in the circuit, so inputs will definitely affect the output. So this type of memory elements are called latches. There are two types of memory elements. Latches and flip-flops. What is the fundamental difference between them? In the case of latch, they may or may not be clock signal. Can you uh, name any uh, uh, latch which uh, does not contain clock signal? So basic latch, man latch, no latch. They are the memory, uh, they are the latches which does not involve any clock signal. Whereas this clock is a latch is a particular lab where I have used one clock signal. So the distinction between uh, first uh, distinction between uh, the flip flop and latch is in the case of latch there may or may not be any clock signal, but in the case of flip flop there will always be one clock signal. This is one point. The second point is uh, if it is a clock latch, in the case of clock latch the output depends on the clock, clock active level. So whenever in the circuit you have clock active level, the output will get affected by the input. So that means that the output is level sensitive with respect to the clock. In the case of clock latch, the output is level sensitive with respect to clock. I repeat, in the case of clock, land, uh, clock latch, the outputs are level sensitive with respect to clock. What is in the case of flip-flop? The outputs are edge sensitive with respect to clock. In the case of flip-flop, the outputs are edge sensitive with respect to the clock. And that uh, edge sensitiveness uh, may add the rising edges or it may be at the falling edges. So in the case of flip flop, the outputs are edge sensitive with respect to the clock active edges. But in the case of latch, clock latch, the outputs are dependent are level sensitive with respect to the clock signal. So what are the basic differences between the latch and the flip flop? So it may or may not have clock signal, flip flop with a clock signal and uh, latches it, it is level sensitive but flip flop it is edge sensitive. Uh, uh, level, the outputs are level sensitive with respect to the clock. Outputs are edge sensitive with respect to the clock. What is the level sensitive? The output of the corresponding memory element is level sensitive. Output of the corresponding level, uh, memory element is edge sensitive. Edge sensitive with respect to what? Clock signal. Level sensitive with respect to a clock signal. Okay, so a clock signal and output I can do introduce to the answer to the one question. Fine. Sir, exam a theory type actually. So, Puruna question that.
uh, S and R, they may affect the QQ bar under which condition? When signal is one. When clock signal is one. When clock signal is zero, the S and R cannot have any effect at all. Now let me assume that uh, this is one and this is also one. Now, is there a difference between uh, this circuit with the previous circuit? If I make PR bar 1 and PR bar also 1. No, sir. It will remain the same. So, that means it will act just like the previous circuit. Yes, sir. Here. Ah, did you want it? No, sir. Uh, here, the S and R inputs, they can affect the output only in synchronism with the clock signal. <laughs> yes and R, they may affect the output only in synchronism with the clock signal. That means uh, if the clock signal is zero, S and R cannot affect the output. But when uh, clock is active, then S and R can affect the output. So S and R are operating <coughs> in synchronism with the clock. So these S and R, they are called. Synchronous inputs. Now say this PR bar is zero and PR bar is one. What will happen to Q? Sir, one. one. Sir, Abol. Sir, PR bar is PLR bar key, sir. So this will become one. But uh, uh, this, uh, by, by the way, if Q becomes one, what does it mean? The memory is set or is it? Set. The memory is set. So by forcing PR bar zero, the memory becomes set and uh, uh, is this uh, setting of memory output is coming in synchronism with the clock? No, sir. So let the clock be of any level, 0 or 1 does not matter. As soon as my PR bar becomes 0, Q has got to be 1. So is the PR bar operating in synchronism with the clock? No, sir. No. Right. So, this is one observation. Go back to PR is equal to one state. Now, make CLR bar zero. So, what will happen? CLR bar is not synchronous. No. What will happen to output? Uh, Q bar will Q be bar one. one. And if the Q bar is one, I expect that eventually my Q will all be uh, reset. Yes. Isn't it? So, what I find is that uh, the memory will eventually reset as soon as my clear bar becomes zero. And this resetting action has got nothing to do with the clock level. So, so reset the camera, sir. Yeah, the memory ka, uh, Q bar jodi one hai. Q the le kiya hai? Zero. 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 Whatever may be the level of the clock, the memory may be the same by forcing CLR bar zero. So this CLR bar is once again uh, one asynchronous input. It is not operating in synchronism with the clock. Those signals which operate in uh, those input signals which operate in synchronism with the clock are termed as synchronous inputs. 
and those inputs uh, which operate uh, without in sync uh, uh, having any relationship with the clock they are termed as the asynchronous inputs now what i find is this pr bar and clear bar both are asynchronous in nature so this observation i have pr bar asynchronous inputs now when uh, this pr bar becomes zero uh, and uh, by the way i must ensure that both are not becoming zero simultaneous that has to be ensured by the user because if you uh, uh, force uh, both pr bar and clear bar zero in that case both will uh, both q and q bar will try to analogy constant so in that case uh, i cannot uh, enforce uh, 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 the q and q bar concept so that has got to be avoided so zero zero input combination you cannot apply but one one that uh, is the pr bar and clr bar are not having any effect on the output and uh, i can activate any one of the two signals at a time and activating means here by in the nomenclature i yes seeing that i have given the name as x bar if x bar is the name of the signal that implies that this input signal is active low signal if the signal should remain inactive i should force logic one level if the signal should become active i should give logic zero level. so in the signal nomenclature if i have the bar that implies the signal is active low type so what i find here is my pr bar clear bar both are active low type so whichever becomes active the corresponding action is initiated now pr bar to the active hai mane pr bar hai ki hota hocche what is the required value of pr bar if it has got to become active zero zero So when PR bar is active, is the memory set or reset? Set. Memory is set. So that's why this is called the preset input. So from there, PR has been taken, and as it is active low, the normal case is PR bar. Uh, when CLR uh, bar is Active or zero. What happens to the memory? Reset. 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 That's why this signal is named as RST bar, reset bar, or the resetting a memory is nothing but clearing the memory also. So for CLR, do two in to me, which are there? Do both two in bar. RST bar one can happen. Which CLR bar one can happen. So do they both even? But remember, uh, this clear bar and clear bar or reset bar, they are all asynchronous in nature. And every memory element are normally is normally equipped with one set of preset clear inputs, which are asynchronous, which can asynchronously set or reset the memory device. and that asynchronous preset clear inputs they will reside at the very last stage of the memory block or to be more specific very last stage nand latch of the memory block in one nand latch there may be only one basic nand latch there may be more than one basic nand latch but whichever nand latch comes at the very last stage that is from where i derive the q q bar outputs that nand latch must be equipped with the preset bar and the clear bar inputs not the earlier nand latch here so far in the uh, we have talked about only a single nand latch circuit there might be one circuit which may involve more than one nand latch that will come in the next class 
Okay, just to further, um, uh, um, uh, just take it um, granted that wherever I have to use one preset bar and clear bar in one memory device, that preset bar and clear bar inputs will be connected to the last stage NAND latch. As here, I have only a single stage NAND latch, that NAND latch is being, being given with the preset bar and clear bar input. And that connection should be of this form. Now, block the runners. So, you look at low logic and use the shirt and I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the cards for a bit. Pierre Bajit, the one that I like to say, but is it to have it? Nothing. It will never be a good thing. So, she can have an active character output of a filter and a zero good thing. We did really nine less now in the normal letter. So, in that case, I would have got PR and PR because they will be the active man. Sir, I mean, just the QS shut us CLR to the use coding. I'll give you by the shut us to the PR use coding. You could have a कौन-कौन से जीरो कोच्चू तुम्हें? फिर वन कोल लेकिन कौन-कौन मेमोरी नैंडर आउटपुट चेंज है? ना सर। तने। This is the diagram. This is the block diagram of a sir latch without asynchronous inputs and with asynchronous input it will look something like this This is the block diagram of one SR latch with asynchronous set and clear inputs. Oh, by the way, this uh, uh, PR is also sometimes called set input. You want the set input? Sir, how about it? Sir, black boxes are cube. Cube are due to output the output. Either. 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 मेमोरि in that case, that will become if the memory is flip flop. So the corresponding block. Sir, sir, it it is a round. Ki bolna. Okay. Most of them, but in case I I don't know how how I can realize that. But say I have somehow I have realized one S R type of memory where the output is S sensitive with respect to the clock. In that case, will it still remain S R latch? It's a flip flop. That will be that will be another one flip flop. Block diagram wise, the symbolic difference between the flip flop and the Let is this. What is the difference? Clock. 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 Here, this in instead of writing clock explicitly, I just give one arrow. So that arrow implies that it is asensitive with respect to the clock signal. 
whereas the clock is excessively lit in here and there is no aroma that implies that here the clock is level sensitive here the memory is level sensitive with respect to the clock এখানে যদি আমি একটা ইনভার্টার দিতাম হোয়াট উড হ্যাভ বিকাম দা অ্যাকটিভ লেভেল অফ দা ক্লক জিরো জিরো সো দ্যাট টাইপ অফ ল্যাজ উইল বি ডেজিগনেটেড বাই দিস অন বাবল ক্লক ইন বাবল মিস देयर इज अ ওয়ান ইনভার্টার অ্যাজ ইট ইমপ্লিমেন্টেড Similarly, here this this particular module or block that implies that the memory element is rising as sensitive okay. with respect to clock. Uh -huh. If I require uh -huh. something, some memory, uh, some flip flop which is where the output is negative as sensitive with respect to the clock, in that case the symbol will be this. So this but bubble is, at the sir, clock sorry. input yes, implies sir, that sir. this is negative HD guard clock. Circuit theory or negative HD guard memory. The bubble in this particular latch symbol implies that here the active level the is of the clock is zero. There is low level sensitivity. The output is low level sensitivity. Okay, these are the basic differences uh, of. Uh, of uh, uh, क्लॉक because yeah, here you find if you analyze the circuit you'll find that the outputs are level sensitive with respect to clock maybe with the logic level sensitive or the negative level sensitive maybe with the logic high sensitive or the logic low sensitive with respect to clock so they has got to be yeah, the they cannot be found as fit to the but in 99.9% .9 books they mostly term them as Maybe besides uh, Newtown, you have to go uh, yeah. to consult any NPT and lecture notes from uh, uh, respected IIT professors. They will also find that they are also going uh, for the same thing. Yes, Sangram Sahib Howda. I have so far I have consulted them. Oh, I have gone through several NPT and lectures and I have found only two uh, uh, lecture schedules. One was from IIT Bangalore professor and another one uh, from IIT Madras professor. Uh, they are mentioning this difference. They are saying that no, these are not the people. They are the latches. Why do the books refer to these block diagrams as the people? Because the people of internal structures are very difficult to understand. The people of internal structures are very complex in nature. They are not so simple as you find in this latch. There are several other complex feedbacks involved there to realize the edge sensitivity. The arriving at edge sensitivity is not that simple. And naturally, if the circuit is quite complex, its expression will also become quite complex. So they try to avoid it totally, and instead they say that okay, this is the flip flop, this is the latch. that uh, that is not uh, the thing uh, 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 i'll uh, go for only one uh, 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 flip flop internal structure configuration and i will show that uh, how 
intelligently that feedback architecture has been implemented so that i automatically get a sensitivity chala gaya tha na mera bhi pada hua hai table mein uh so if you uh, find a, a, any block diagram you just while try, try to be wise try to analyze the circuit and see whether at all it is level sensitivity block or the a sensitivity block If it is level sensitive, don't term it a trip lock. You should term it LAN. Though the book is referring to as trip lock. Ten ten's ka video hai, lekin wo video ko samajhne ke liye ten ten minute ka video ko samajhne ke liye ten ten minute ka video. In a future memory block diagram, we assume that the preset bar and clear bar are present. But if you are not using them, we are assuming that those two signals are made. Zero or one? 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 Will simply not draw those input terminals to hundred the 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 hundred But uh, in my class, we will try to avoid explicitly writing those terminals. We will assume that those terminals are already connected to PCC level. Or ये तो वैसा भी नहीं है कि तुम okay. Now what is the problem with this clock uh, tesla latch? Or uh, is there any problem with the clock tesla latch? ये तो ऐसा भी नहीं है कि हंड्रेड तुम कर लो उसका हंड्रेड हम कर लेंगे या तो स्टार्टिंग वाला नहीं समझोगे तो बाद वाला घंटा समझोगे करना पड़ेगा So that you have to accept if you are going for latches. Yeah, definitely, but definitely the latches are having this type of problem. But uh, anything else specific to the SR latch, clock SR latch? ये union का वरों सब कुछ नहीं है भाई अपने वरों teacher लोगों के माथा घुमा हुआ है teacher लोगों are you able to use all possible input combinations? उनका भी दिमाग चल रहा है student लोग cheating कर रहा है तो one input combination you cannot use. Which one? It's one one. to one one. It's one one one. That input combination is prohibited. So that you cannot use. So, so uh, definitely, if I uh, uh, try to restrict the designer uh, uh, not to you uh, by saying that twenty-five uh, percent of the possible input combinations you cannot use, so that will be a quite a troublesome uh, problem for that particular designer. So the designer will say that okay, but as you are not allowing me to uh, use the one-one input combination, uh, so uh, please uh, give me some other mem memory device uh, which will also allow one-one input combination along with the other three. So the next uh, version of the memory element uh, that we will be studying is uh, uh, an improved version of the SR clock SR latch, where the one-one input combination will also be allowed. Uh, so definitely the other one is the different uh, memory element as compared to the clock tesla latch so uh, it should be having a different font with a different name also and we will talk about that as one jk latch and how uh, that jk latch is implemented and what uh, might be the problem there how to rectify them uh, those things we will study uh, after the puja vacation aaj ke already 58 ho gaye बाकी का तो एग्जाम भी है तो एग्जाम नहीं दिया तो आई स्टार्ट टेकिंग द एक्सरसाइज सर आपके नोट्स क्लियर हो गए हैं एक ही तो दिए थे ना सर सर आज के लास्ट क्लास में ये पूजा रहा है आप कहां से कम जाएंगे लास्ट वाला तो वर्कशॉप हम लोग बंक मार दिया सर हमें अपना जिगर स्टोर से सर अपना तो लास्ट ही क्लास में सर 
मैं हमारा मार्क्स के बारे में नहीं बोल रहा हूँ मैं बोल रहा हूँ विप्लव सरकार मोहिनाथ दास आयुष्मान रोमो सर जयतिक माजी एबसेंट शुभोतित मंडल प्रेजेंट सर निदुल एबसेंट मितुंजय एबसेंट सूर्य निशान गुलशन प्रेजेंट सर ओबीरूप एबसेंट ओनली नाम अच्छा प्रेजेंट है सी हाँ, ऑनिक, ऑनिक चक्र